Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making fried green tomatoes. Okay, what you want are three really green tomatoes like this one right here. You don't really want them like this when they're starting to get streaks of pink or yellow on them because they have more juice when they get like that. And juice is the number one thing that causes fried green tomatoes to be mushy. And mushy fried green tomatoes just ain't that good. But I'm going to show you some tricks on how to get your fried tomatoes really crunchy. Okay, I have a cup of regular cornmeal. This is not mix. If all you have is the mix, you can use the mix. And I have a cup of self-rising flour. If all you have is plain, you do want to throw a little baking powder in that because that will help make your end product a little bit crispier and a little bit fluffier, I guess. Have an egg, which will also make it crispy, and a cup of buttermilk. We got some salt and pepper that we're going to use just to season them with and that's really the only seasoning you need for um, old-fashioned fried green tomatoes. Now there's a lot of recipes where people are spicing them up with all kinds of hot sauce and stuff like that, chili peppers, but fried green tomatoes have salt and pepper on them. You need some oil to cook it in and I'm using grapeseed oil. Um, I've had comments where people have said that, you know, shame on you for saying that there are healthy fat choices. All fat has 120 calories. All fat does have 120 calories, but all fat is not equal. Um, there is no reason why you can't continue to enjoy fried foods that you love if you choose fats to fry them in that don't have um, saturated fat, that don't have trans fats, that aren't... Um, processed like Crisco and stuff is processed it will clog your arteries it has stuff in it that you don't need to be eating and this has a lot of vitamin E in it it has omega-6s in it and it has the polyunsaturated fat which actually helps make your body healthy and it's good for your brain and your entire nervous system so there are certainly healthy oil choices and there are healthy fat choices so you can continue to enjoy your fried foods. Now, if you want to flavor this a little bit more, if you're not crazy about the taste of grapeseed oil or olive oil or something, and you want more flavor in it, you can add a tablespoon of butter to it or even a tablespoon of bacon grease, which will give your fried food maybe a flavor that you prefer more. So there are healthy oil choices. Now, what I've done over here is I've already sliced these about a quarter of an inch thick, and you can see that juice dripping off of them. I'm going to show you how I did that. We're going to slice this one about a quarter of an inch thick, and I want to start with this end. You want to discard the ends. Um, you don't want to leave that skin part on there. And you don't have to slice way down and waste half your mater. You can cut this core out, the stem where it was on the vine. Well, usually that comes right out, but because I'm videoing it, it's not going to. Okay, that's garbage. You want to have a sharp knife for this. And try to keep them even. Oops, that one got a little thin. What you want to do, how I'm getting this juice to drip out of this, remember I said juice would make your finished product 
um, mushy and slimy and it won't be crispy and tasty is you want to sprinkle both sides of it just a little bit with salt and then you're going to let it sit there for like 15 minutes and that salt will draw the moisture out of your maters. Once you have salted these you're just going to let them sit here for about 15 minutes and then you need some paper towels and you're going to dry them off and you will wipe this salt here off. It on here got a little bit thin too. And you don't necessarily have to have a wire rack to let these sit on. It does kind of make it nice and it gives them, they can drip instead of just soaking on the paper towels. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and slice this other one here and let him start sitting. So this one is not ideal, but I am going to go ahead and fry it. Um, because this recipe is more than enough for three tomatoes and I'm going to waste a lot of my other stuff if I don't and I think it'll be okay it just comes out better if your tomato is really green you do want to cut out any little spots that are in them you don't want to leave those on there and you also want to make sure you wash your maters good before you start this um, to get any dirt or if you bought them, which I did buy these because my, they're not ready in my garden yet, um, make sure you get any pesticides off. You are going to need paper towels. If you don't want to use paper towels, and I know a lot of people um, are into reusable products, you can get like a tea towel that doesn't have lint on it and it'll work just fine for this. But you want to make sure you use something that doesn't have lint on it. You don't want to get lint all over your maters and then cook it. Um, okay, we're going to need some little shallow bowls to pour this stuff in so that we can dip everything. Your flour stays by itself. You're not going to put anything in that. Beat your egg up just a little bit. And then add your buttermilk. And mix that together. And you can make these um, using regular milk, but if you use regular milk, I'll probably cut it down to a half a cup and use two eggs maybe because the regular milk is not going to tend to stick to it as much as the buttermilk it's not as thick okay and in the third bowl I'm going to pour my cornmeal and that's going to be the last thing we dip these in These maters that have been sitting for about 15 minutes, what you want to do is blot that off. And like I said, you're going to wipe all that salt off that you first put on there. And you can see how much liquid is in that one slice. Okay. You want to sprinkle both sides with a little salt and a little pepper and you do this to taste to suit you if you like a lot of pepper put a lot of pepper if you're doing a low salt um, go low salt or even use a light salt this salt I'm using is an all-natural salt and it has a lot of minerals in it um, that regular table salt salt does not have and it also doesn't cause the bloating problems that regular table salt does. It's hard to find though. So what you want to do after you salt and pepper each slice is you want to put it in your flour and you want to make sure you really cover it good. And then you just kind of shake off the extra and you're going to dip it in the buttermilk in the egg flip it over there so you get it coated good and 
let it drip off a little bit and then you're going to put it in the cornmeal and coat it good with that. And after you coat them all, and we're going to coat a few more, you want to set them aside and you want to let them rest for about 10 minutes before you actually put them in your pan. But while we finish coating a few more of these, I want to start preheating my pan. And I want to put about a quarter of an inch of oil in this. Now, if your frying pan is not your best friend, use a nonstick pan for this and save Granny's cast iron skillet for something else. I'm going to turn this on about medium and just let it sit there and preheat and we'll check it in a minute and see if it's hot enough. So each tomato slice, you want to dry it off good. This is um, something that you would make really for kind of a special dinner. Um, you can use these as a side dish for your dinner or you can use them as an appetizer or they're really good for just a snack. But I would not want to make these for a living for tons and tons of people. Because to make them come out right, it does take a little bit of effort. Like salt on each side and then drying them off. And then you have to dip them three times. If you do these kind of like the way I've done them um, while I was filming the video. You know, if you slice one and put the salt on it and then get the rest of your stuff ready. That's going to give you enough time to let everything sit the proper amount of time. You want to let them sit about 15 minutes with just the salt and then you want to let them sit about 10 minutes before you start frying them after you've done all this. It does make it easier too if you go ahead and get out three forks like I've done here because if you use one fork and you go from one to the other it's going to end up looking like my fingers and your fork is going to get thicker and thicker and thicker and you're not going to be able to do anything with it. It just it's going to have so much cornmeal and flour and stuff on it that it's not going to be a fork anymore. And you can see here, you, the breading, when you get it on there, it is pretty thick and that's what you want. That'll make the outside extra crunchy. To check the oil, you can just sprinkle a little bit of your cornmeal in it. And when it starts popping, it's hot. That's not popping at all. So our pan's nowhere near ready yet. Okay, you can see now that the little bit of cornmeal that I dropped in here, the oil is kind of starting to sizzle around it. So I can actually start adding the tomatoes to this pan now and they will fry. Now if you put them in here before the oil gets hot, they'll get soggy and they'll stick to the bottom of the pan. You don't want to put too many in at one time. You don't want to crowd them. You want to keep them spread out. That's why I said this is a slow process and to make them right and to make them come out crispy, it's going to take some time and some care. So it's not something I'd want to do for a couple hundred people. But just place them one at a time. And that oil is barely hot enough. I actually think I'm going to wait another minute and let that one really start sizzling because if I Feel this painful right now it's going to drop the temperature of my oil too much. So I'm going to give it just a couple more seconds. You will have to adjust your temperature on your pan as you cook these because if it gets too hot they'll burn but if it's not hot enough like I said they'll get soggy and they'll stick and you don't want that and you can see this is barely hot enough and it's not really hot enough over here at the edge because it's not sizzling over here it's just sizzling toward the center. I'm going to give it a minute before I put more in there because adding these will drop the temperature even more. Okay, we're going to let these cook about four minutes per side, about, but you want to get them golden brown. Now while those are cooking, I want to give you another option. And this is something that I really like and not everybody does, but fried green maters, because they are green tomatoes, and because you're dipping them in that buttermilk, 
they can tend to be a bit on the tangy side which a lot of people really really like that I mean that's what they like most about them but you can also add just a little pinch of sugar as you're adding your salt and your pepper you don't want to get carried away you want to put it on there about like what you do your salt and your pepper and I think that really makes them taste good you're not making them super sweet you're just adding a little sweetness to them a little bit of flavor and I only do that on one side if you like them sweeter of course you can add more and the sugar also tends to help them brown so if you're having trouble browning them if you've tried them before and you could just could not get them brown add just a sprinkle of sugar on there but it's just another way to eat them and like I said not everybody likes it but I really do and in fact I prefer mine with sugar over the ones without sugar and you just dip it the same way Brett claims he likes his better without sugar but I bet you five dollars if I gave him both he'd like the one with sugar better and don't forget to dry them off good when your paper towels get wet get you out some fresh paper towels well I'm only about halfway done breading these and I can tell right now I'm gonna have to get out some more cornmeal so let's just do that I probably just dumped another cup of cornmeal in there and I don't know if I'll need all that or not but like I said it's getting hard to get it covered and you definitely want to get them covered so I don't want to struggle and try and scrape cornmeal out of the bottom of the pan that's what makes them good okay these are brown now and you should be able to just turn them over with a fork nothing fancy I could have used maybe another second been rolled around a little bit now a lot of people I know will tell you to only turn your food over once well I think that's about silly I mean these two here are completely brown and these two here have a little edge left on them that's not so when I'm, I'm gonna flip them again and I'm gonna brown this in here because I want them all brown good and it's not gonna hurt a thing I say flip it till it's brown when you're doing something like this after you've been at it a while I swear it's tempting to just throw everything in here but if you want them all to come out you really have to take the time to do this I'm gonna dry up a couple of them at once here and season a couple of them at once you know you don't have to dry them all individually and season them all individually like what I have been doing you can do a few at a time but you don't want to do too many at a time because the salt will continue to draw moisture out and if you do like six or seven slices by the time you get them breaded they're going to be soaking wet again and you really don't want that the sugar also will draw out moisture so you don't want to do too many at one time Okay, these first few here they're looking pretty done so I'm gonna start taking them out and you don't want to take them all out at once um, because if you take them all out at once your pan will get too hot that's just like if you add them all at once your pan will get too cold and remember to get the ones that have been sitting the longest the ones that you have already dredged that's what that's called by the way dredging or coating the ones that you have already coated and they have been sitting for a while where your um, your cornmeal and everything is moist remember to put those in first so that they've had time to rest 
because that really will make a big difference in how your finished product comes out. You can just drain these on uh, paper towels. You don't have to have a rack, but a rack really works a whole lot better and it keeps them crispy. So if you've got a rack, definitely use a rack to drain them on. And if you don't have a rack, you can get a rack at those Dollar Tree stores, two of them for like a dollar. And they're not very big, but they're the size I have over here and they work great for stuff like this. So get you a couple of racks. That one there still is not quite done. And like I said, I want him good and crispy. So we'll leave that in there. And you can tell where I've added these three, my oil really is not sizzling as much as it was. So you have to be careful when you're adding them. Don't do too many at one time. You always want to serve your fried green tomatoes while they're hot because they're not good once they get cold. But if you choose a lighter oil like the grapeseed oil, they're not going to taste greasy even once they do get cold. And if you look over here in my pan, you can see that most of the oil I put in there is still in there. That's because oils like that don't absorb as much into your food and it tends to be crispier as it cooks rather than getting soggy. So you can serve these just as a snack. Um, you can have them as a side dish to a meal. You can have them as a meal or you can serve them as an appetizer. And I really like mine just like this. I don't like to dip them in anything, but people make all kinds of special dips for them. You can dip them in plain sour cream. Uh, a lot of people are dipping them in ranch and I made a homemade ranch dressing earlier today and we'll have that video up in a day or two if it's not already up. So I'm gonna serve them with some of that. And people also have a lot of traditional homemade relishes that they serve them with. So however you like them, if you like them dipped or if you just like them plain, eat them hot. Take your time, keep an eye on your pan temperature, make sure you get it evenly brown on both sides. You can see that's crunchy all the way through. That four minutes on each side will make it tender, but not make it mushy. Make sure you get them dry. That salt process at the beginning to suck out the juices and get them dry really, really makes a big difference. The egg makes a big difference and using the self-rising flour or adding some bacon powder to your flour will make a big difference. So if it, whether it's something you've always wanted to try or something that you lost your granny's recipe for or something you've just never been able to get right, if you follow these tips and you take your time, your fried green tomatoes will be the best in the county. So we appreciate you joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and until next time, remember to put God first.